Today I'm talking to Chris Kimsey, the record producer and sound engineer who worked on albums with many of the great rock bands, including seven Rolling Stones albums, the iconic Frampton Comes Alive, and many others from Duran Duran to In Excess. He spent much of his career at the famous Olympic Studios, where he recently returned as a consultant alongside his many current projects. We met each other, if you'll remember, um, at somebody's house having dinner. Yes, we did. We, we met at uh, um, Roger and Amanda Miles' house yeah. um, having dinner with them. Um, Roger is the curator of everything old at Olympic. Yeah. Um, and quite wonderful that he's put together um, the record collection. Um, he's trying to collect, I think there was something like 872 albums recorded at Olympic Studios. Wow. And he's trying to collect every one of those. I know he's got a good 650. Has he? Yeah. Uh, and wow. he's opened up a, um, a vinyl record shop opposite Olympic yeah. Studios. Which we may go to a bit yeah, later. Which is terrific. <laughs> First solo album that um, I recorded with Peter Frampton and co-produced with him, Windy Change. Oh, it's in very good condition, this one. Um, there's a song um, called Oh For Another Day that we actually recorded. It's um, a nine on acoustic guitar and vocal, that's it. Oh, and strings as well, but we overdubbed those afterwards. But the, um, the vocal and the guitar were recorded in the stairwell at Olympic. They weren't recorded... Um, in the studio, they were recorded in the stairwell because it had this great ambience, um, great reverb in it. There's a song on here called I'd Love to Change the World, and that's when I came up with this idea of putting the vocal to a Leslie, which was quite groundbreaking for its time. And this was recorded in. Wow. This is 1971. Um, so, just um, going back to you, where, where did you where did you grow up? Where are you from originally? Are you a Londoner? Um, I was born in Battersea. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was born in oh, wow. Inworth Street off of Battersea Park Road. Yeah, and um, I started going to Spencer Park School. Okay, which is opposite Wandsworth Prison. Um, oh yeah, but in the most amazing building. Um, it was built for the um, um, returning soldiers of the Crimean War. Oh, wow. They were invalided and that's where they would put them. And then after that, it became a, um, an asylum. And the way that I really got into sound recording um, was the fact that um, mum and dad had bought a tape recorder for me. Just like, you know, a little tape mm. recorder made by the co-op, I think. Yeah. Um, and I would listen to um, mainly um, film soundtracks. And um, I just fell in love um, with listening to music in that way. But I also started to record just any sound as well. Yeah. I, I, fa I was fascinated by the fact that you could, you know, capture a sound. Mm. So that led to sending me to a Inner London Educational Authority studio. It was a small classroom that had a, a tiny little control room. Okay. And so I would go there, I think it was maybe um, twice a month. There was another another lad from um, the east end of London. Um, his name was Ray Staff. So we're both like 14, 13 or 14. Um, and wow. That's and the, so good of the school, isn't it? I it mean, was good of the school. No, yeah. it, it really was. Yeah, um, yeah it was. Um, the chap in charge of it, his name uh, was Ray Cooper. Now, it turns out that many, many years on, two things popped up. One was that the, the other kid who was um, on this, um, this thing with me, Ray Staff, he ended up being one of the best mastering engineers in the UK. I'd see his name pop up and I thought, Is that, that can't be the same Ray same Staff. Guy, yes. And it was. But the even stranger thing was that I was at a, um, a PR thing for the launch of Elton John and Bernie talking two rooms and going there I'm looking at this chap we're looking we keep looking at each other I thought I know you from somewhere this chap was Ray Cooper the young teacher 
musician that you know taught me you know mm. those lessons well yeah. ray cooper is is the same ray cooper that plays percussion with elton john oh my and word. has done for many many years and is part of handmade films oh and, wow and we both looked at each other and actually had a bit of a tear because oh. we were oh wow is that really you yeah it was a fantastic moment so oh, it's funny how lovely, those moments yeah. come around in your life that yeah you never yeah. imagined so, so what was it? What was it like? Uh, paint a picture of the of the Olympic at that time, 1966. Yeah. Is it in full flow as a recording studio? Well, it, it, I, I, mean, I joined in 67. It actually opened yeah. in 66. So. Oh, it opened. Uh, opened in 66. Oh, did yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. So it was still it quite from, new. It moved from. It was in um, near Marble Arch. I can't remember where in Marble near Marble Arch, but it moved from much smaller premises in Marble Arch. Yeah. Um, with Keith Grant again. Um, as the studio manager uh, and then when it moved to Barnes it was because the lease had expired in Marble Arch and they were looking for somewhere. One of the first sessions that I worked on was with Glyn Johns mm. and people had, um, other assistants had warned me they said well you be careful with Glyn he's suffers no fools he's yeah. really yeah he's really specific so I did find out exactly what he needed for the session yeah. Because also in those days... Had he done a lot by then? then? Was he already... Glenn, yeah, yeah Glenn Very established. Yeah, a, yeah. yeah he, he was... Um, yeah, mainly he the was Stones. Name. Mainly yeah. the Stones. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I went... Um, I kind of won my gold star with Glyn. Glyn loved the way, you know, I got everything set up and there was no problem. So Glyn would ask for me. Okay. on other sessions so then so I, how are you working with him at that point as then? the assistant still so he the was assistant, setting everything up setting everything up, up sure we watching him listening learning doing all yeah. the tape you know tape assisting yeah you know all, all the labeling and, and logging everything wow um so that was that so was what the beginning. Uh, at this point this is quite a big question but w what do you think um at this point what's your real skill do you think what 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 makes you better than somebody else at doing what you're doing i am truly gifted with um my ears um i can hear things that and i don't mean like what dogs hear yeah um yeah. i can hear things in music that other people don't hear and i i also have this um wonderful gift of being able to balance sounds together wow um and it's um that is what my gift is. Uh, and then um, in understanding that, then as a producer, you kind of apply that in how to get a good performance out of an artist. Yeah. You know, it, um, after that part, it becomes, as an engineer and producer or just a producer, it, there's a lot of um, psychology mm. involved in it, a lot. Um, and that's... Funny enough, I think that's the thing that Keith Grant saw in me as a young kid when he, you know, when he gave me the job. Yeah. He must have seen something that yeah. this kid, you know, he's good to be around. He's got he, a good way with him. He's and, got a yeah. good way. Yeah. It, it's natural for him. It's yeah. not, you know, fake or he's not. Um, so, yeah, it was really interesting. I mean, uh, yeah, if, if I could go back and do all that part again, I would. Yeah. Because that was one of the most beautiful moments of my life, was that um, starting at Olympic and learning so much. And, oh, must and be really amazing, a family yeah. of all, all the yeah. engineers there were yeah. super friendly. And they would show you little tricks as well. Yeah. Um, not the same with, well, I don't know this 100%, but I've been told by people who worked at EMI at Abbey Road that, you know, you didn't ask the engineer what he was doing, you know. No, you no. To, and also at Olympic, what they would let you do was, if there was any dead time, if the studio wasn't being used, um, you could say, can I come in and do my own session? Oh, right. So they would let you use the place. So, oh, right. you know, you might get a couple of friend musicians and, yeah, yeah. and have a bash at recording. Um, and also what we used to do, which mm. wasn't strictly allowed, was we used to go down to the tape store, to the basement. Yeah. And dig up, oh, what should I have a go at? Oh, I might mix a Jimi Hendrix track. So you bring up the masters of something. Oh, wow. And fool around with them, which was, you had to be pretty careful because if something happened to the master, you would yeah, you'd, you'd be out. You'd yeah, yeah. Be out. Yeah. As always, we'd love to hear your thoughts on the podcast. 
If you're enjoying it, hit the subscribe button and leave a review. Or if you have something to say, email us at thegrensonpodcast at grenson.co.uk.